Hello everyone, as I told you in the last video that I would be making a detailed video on the big announcement that Canada has made last week that Canada would be actually inviting over 90,000 essential temporary workers and international graduates. So this is that video. Here I will be talking in length about the eligibility criteria, about the timelines. I've discussed all about those in the previous videos. Now we'll be going on to discuss it in detail. In the last video, we discussed about the main eligibility criteria. We didn't go into too much detail. So in this video, we would go into detail of knowing what is the eligibility criteria of the different streams that are there. And we'll also check some of the jobs that are available. You can go on to apply for those jobs because the primary criteria for these streams is that you should be employed. You should be currently employed in Canada. So I'll also tell you some of the jobs that you can go on to apply directly. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and I regularly upload useful videos like these. So if you haven't subscribed this channel yet, please consider subscribing. Also, if you want to immigrate to Canada and if you have any queries, you can come over to Dream Abroad Canada Facebook group. And also, if you want to enjoy some fun moments, you can follow me at Instagram. My ID is Dreamers abroad. Okay guys, as I told you in the last video that the breakup of this 90,000 is like 20,000 applications for the temporary workers in healthcare, 30,000 for the temporary workers in other selected essential occupations and 40,000 for the international students who graduated from a Canadian institution. So we will quickly go through all of these. First, let's see the public policy that has been announced. So this has been announced on April 14th. What it says is that these special public policies will grant permanent status to temporary workers and international graduates who are already in Canada and who possess the skills and experience we need to fight the pandemic and accelerate our economic recovery. So here they've announced about these three different categories that I've shown you in my earlier video. Mind it, this is on first come first served basis. They would start accepting applications on May 6th, 2021 and they would accept applications until November 5th, 2021 or until they have reached their limit. I strongly feel that they would reach their limit much before this timeline of November 5th. So if you want to apply through these streams, then you certainly need to hurry. Now mind it, there's no point system in here, which means that even if you have low CRS score, something that just makes you eligible for this program, you still would have equal chance than someone who has got a very good IELTS score. So yes guys, this was the reason why IELTS and CellPip websites crashed on April 14th when this news release actually came out. People wanted to get their test dates as early as possible. Of course, they gave the timeline here only for three weeks, which means all those people who have a test score by then would definitely have a greater edge. Now, apart from these three streams, there are three other streams as well, which I didn't talk about in the last video because it is mainly for the French speaking or bilingual candidates. And the great thing about that is that there's no cap on this. So if you speak English and you have the English test report, there's a cap of 20,000, 30,000 and 40,000. But in the three additional streams that have been launched for the French speaking or bilingual candidates, there's no intake cap. Okay, so there are some quick facts mentioned here. If you are interested, you can check it out. They tell you about the importance of these programs. Why is it actually necessary? We will rather concentrate on what you need to do to be eligible, what you need to do to apply for this program. Let me first start with all of those people who have recently passed out from Canada. I'll provide a timeline in the description box if you are not one of those. If you're one of those essential workers who have been working tirelessly in the last one year, you have been working in the essential occupations and I'll provide a timeline in the description box. You can skip the first part of the video and move on to the second part. Okay, so let's start discussing about those people who have recently passed out from one of the Canadian institutions. So what does the eligibility requirement actually has to say? The first eligibility criteria is that you must have completed your studies in Canada prior to the date on which the application for permanent residence is received and no earlier than January 2017. So if you passed out until December 2016, then you're not eligible. But if you passed out on or after January 2017, then you are eligible. 
and you must have completed your studies from one of the DLI institutions, designated learning institutions in Canada. Now let's skip this part. What does this DLI institutions actually mean? I'm sure if you have passed out from any Canadian institution, you would know if your if your institution was actually a designated learning institution or not. So let's skip this part and move on to the sec second eligibility requirement, which is that you must have been granted one of the following credentials, a, a degree which could be an associate bachelor's, master's or doctorate, which must be issued on completion of a program of at least eight months in duration. However, however, a degree, diploma, certificate or attestation issued on a completion of a program of any duration leading to an occupation in a skilled trade, then you would be eligible. So which are those occupations? Those are listed down in the annexure A down here. So if your study program was even for six months, but it led to any of these jobs, then you would be eligible. Okay. So I'll move on to the next point. Now, the next part is for all of those people who might have completed one or more diploma, certificate or attestation. I'll provide the link to this article in the description box below. You can check this section out. The next point says that you must have been authorized pursuant to the act and regulations to study throughout their education in Canada, which means, which means that throughout your study, you should have been there on the study permit. The next point is that you should be employed in Canada. The most crucial part here is that you should be employed in Canada. So even if you passed out three years ago, but you're not working, which means that you won't be eligible. You must not be self-employed. So all of those people who might be working as contractors, you won't be eligible. If possible, if you can leave your job as a contractor and you can join another job, then you could be eligible. Guys, the great point about this is that they have not mentioned about any job category. They have not said that you should be working in NOC 0, A or B or any other not code specifically. You might have completed your masters in artificial intelligence and you might be working in Tim Hortons. Still, you would be eligible. That is one of the points that should be applauded about this program. Now coming over to a language proficiency test. You should have at least CLB5. CLB5 is very easy guys. Trust me, people strive to get CLB9. CLB5, what does this mean? CLB5 means that you should have at least four bands in reading and five each in writing, listening and speaking. And similarly, if you're going for CELPIP, then you should have five bands each in reading, writing, listening and speaking. This is very easy to get. If you've been communicating in English for a few years, then I'm pretty sure that you would be able to get five bands without much practice. So that's another great point about this public policy. Then you must reside in Canada with a valid temporary residence status and be physically present in Canada at the time the application for permanent residence is received. So let's say that you're in India currently and you fulfill all the other eligibility criteria, but you do not fulfill this criteria, you should rush to Canada. So at the time of submitting your application, you should be physically present in Canada and you must intend to reside in a province or territory other than Quebec. That's also very important. So those are the main eligibility criteria. You can also apply the permanent residency for your family members who are in Canada or maybe if they are in your home country, they're abroad, you can still apply for their permanent residency as well. And as I told you earlier that the intake cap is 40,000. And guys, I really believe that this might get completed or filled in just few days. However, they have said that the program is open until November 5th. But because of this cap, these 40,000 opportunities would be filled in very soon. So don't waste time if you have the IELTS already, then there's no worries at all. There's already a lot of rush. IELTS and IDP websites crashed. And even when they were up, they were working very slow because of too many students going on to check the dates there, trying to book the dates as early as possible. Let's say if you haven't booked the dates yet, I would suggest you to go on to book the dates. Even if you have to drive two hours to reach out to the center, maybe it's in a different city, all the pain that you might take would totally be worth it. They haven't declared the fees for it yet, but yes, I assume that it would be very similar to the permanent residency as per the other programs as well. Okay, now because one of the most important requirements here is about the job that you should be currently employed in Canada. I want to show you some of the opportunities that are available out there. Those are remote jobs. You can apply and work from the comfort of your home. Those are real job opportunities that are out there. 
Now here I want to thank T-Tech Jobs for reaching out to me so that I can spread the word across the Dream Abroad family. So we've got two job opportunities here. Both of them are for the customer service representative. And the good thing is that both of the jobs are remote jobs. Let's just quickly go through the first job and check out the requirements. So if you're seeking the job, you should be in British Columbia, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, Labrador, Nova Scotia, PEI, Quebec. As an eligibility requirement, you should be fluent in English. However, the education requirement is very low. You can be a high school graduate or equivalent. You should have six months or more of customer service experience and a quiet room. You would need a high speed internet and most likely a computer as well. I assume in this world of pandemic, we all have computers, headsets, mobile phones and most of us would fulfill these basic requirements. The second job is for the bilingual customer service representative for Portuguese and English and for the same provinces as well. Now the good thing with these jobs is that you will get a base salary of up to 17.5 which is a few dollars above the minimum wage level and a permanent full-time position. If you want to apply for this job you should have exceptional communication skills in Portuguese and English excellent computer skills and of course the eligibility to work in Canada among other requirements that are mentioned here. I'll provide the link to both of these jobs in the description box below. If you're interested you can definitely go on to apply for these jobs and of course you can work as the customer service representative with the comfort of your home. Okay talking next about all of those people who are working in the essential occupations, the frontline workers, Canada has decided to reward all of those people who are working in these essential occupations as frontline workers and give them permanent residency. Many of them were working on work permits so finally they would be happy to get the permanent residency. Now, So there are two different streams in there. First of all all those people who are working as temporary workers in the healthcare industry. Obviously Canada needs them badly at this point of time and secondly all of those who are working in essential and secondly, all of those who are working in other essential occupations. We'll check these occupations in a while, but first let's go through the public policy. So through this public policy, a total of 50,000 people would be getting the permanent residency. Let's check out the eligibility criteria. So first of all, they've mentioned that these people must have worked for at least one year of full-time work experience or the equivalent in part-time experience in Canada in an eligible occupation listed in an extra A or B in the last three years before submitting the application. Let's check out which are those occupations. Basically an extra A is for all of those healthcare workers and an extra B is for all the other essential workers of their occupations. So in this list you'll see all the occupations related to the healthcare industry, nursing, dentist, pharmacist, physiotherapist, opticians, massage therapist, dental assistants and many other as well. I'll provide the list down below you can check it out. An extra B which is for the other essential occupations. You would be amazed to see type of job occupations that are in there. Cashiers, service station attendants, store shelf stockers. All these people would have never expected that they could be included to get the Canadian PR so easily. Welders, electricians, plumbers, carpenters, tile setters, painters and decorators, then transport truck drivers who are also in very high demand in Canada, bus drivers, taxi drivers, landscaping and ground maintenance laborers, retail salespersons, general farm workers, janitors, caretakers and building superintendents. You name it and you see it here. So obviously Canada has made life of all of those people a lot easier because they would be able to get the permanent residency finally. Otherwise it would have been very difficult for them. They would not be eligible for the general express entry system. But now they are finally eligible to apply for the Canadian PR. So here the stream A as I told you is for healthcare workers. They've mentioned that this experience cannot be combined with the other occupations mentioned in Annexure B but if you're applying for stream B then it could be a combination of occupations from both of the annexures. Then apart from having that work experience you cannot be unemployed when you are applying. So you should be employed in Canada in any occupation at the time that the application for permanent residence is received. 
then you must not have been self employed unless you are working as a medical doctor in a fee for service arrangement with a health authority so basically you cannot apply if you have your own business you cannot apply if you are working as a contractor here if you have a job then only you can apply then clb4 then coming over to language proficiency test ielts or celpip you should have clb4 clb4 is even more or less probably the lowest score that is mentioned here in ielts you should be able to score 3.5 in reading 4 in writing 4.5 in listening and 4 in speaking very easy guys that evaluation should be less than 2 years old just like any other program then you should reside in canada with a valid temporary resident status and be physically present in canada at the time of application so just like the other program you should be physically present when you're actually applying for this program you should intend to reside in a province or territory other than quebec so these are the most crucial eligibility criteria that are mentioned here and they are very easy again you can apply for your family members if they're in canada even if they are not in canada you can apply for the permanent residency of your family members so that's a big big bonus then the intake cap as i told you earlier twenty thousand for the healthcare workers and thirty thousand for the other essential occupations and the timeline for that is until november 5th but guys don't wait until november 5th as i told you earlier in the video as well these spots will be filled in very early because getting the dates for ielts is not so easy these days so many people trying for those dates so yes there would be few days of opportunity that you can avail but i would say do not waste even a single day procrastinating this because it could cost you your canadian permanent residency i would say that these applications might be filled in few days if not weeks certainly not months They've given six months time for it, but it is not going to last for even a couple of months. Maybe in the few weeks itself, it would be filled and it's on the first come first serve basis. You don't have to score good in IELTS in order to be eligible for it. You don't have to score any points. There's no points table as such. And if all of these criteria are easy for you, it would be easy for others as well. So many people would actually try to get the permanent residency through these new programs these new streams out there so guys that's it for this video i hope you got most of your answers if you have more questions please put them down in the comment section below i'll try to consolidate most of the frequently asked questions and i'll try to create another video so that all your queries are answered and you are updated thanks a lot for watching this video if you haven't subscribed the channel yet please click the subscribe button if you have any feedback, please put it down in the comment section below. And yes, do not forget to like this video and share it with your friends as well. Thanks again for watching this video.